Hi there, welcome along to another workout for you to row along to. It's week five, session two of the 5K plan and we're on a nice, simple bottom tier. All we're gonna do is 30 minutes at 18 strokes per minute. Very simple. Pace-wise, you're gonna be right about 2K plus 20 to 22, which works out about 5K plus 15 to 17. But I want this to be a bottom tier and like a bottom, bottom tier. So if you start to feel this is tough at all, back off two or three seconds, okay? This has to be at the bottom. Session one was an intense mid-tier and obviously session three is gonna be a very intense top tier. So this one has to be a recovery. I do not want any tension, stress, inflammation across your body from today's row at all. This is very much a bottom tier, okay? Have I said it enough? <laughs> so let's get cracking into a four minute warm up. Okay, so start off by setting up the drag factor on your machine. If you don't know about drag factor, then please check out the video on YouTube. Then set the monitor height so you don't have to look up and you don't have to look down. And then finally set the foot straps so that they cover the bottom lace in your shoe or if you're in socks like me, they just let you hinge forward comfortably as you move to the front of the machine. There we go. So four minute warm up. And trust me, I'm in the hoodie. I need a warm up. Four minute warm up at 18 strokes per minute, and I'll talk you through the drills, etc. in three, two, one, go. So just nice, easy start. Okay, just get moving. I've had a tough day at work. I hardly stood up all day. I think the only times I ever stood up were to make a coffee or as a result of drinking too much coffee, if you get what I mean. Don't want to share too much. We're only 22 seconds into this row. So I've got a kind of a feels like a, a crystallized lower back. That's the best way to explain it. I just feel I need to get moving a little bit in order to be able to start thinking about pace and stuff for the main row. So I'm nice and gentle, slow right now. And just moving back and forward is I feel my body warming up and easing off. And as we get to the one minute gone point in this warm up, I can start to think a little bit about my body position and making sure I'm giving a solid push from the legs. So what a good powerful posture back leaning in to one o'clock at the front of the machine holding that lean for about half of the leg drive before swinging through the hips over the hips into an 11 o'clock position at the back of the stroke still maintaining a good powerful posture or trying to it is me after all Mr. Slumpy at times, but hey, every day I'm working on it. Okay, one more stroke. And now I want you to take one foot out of the foot straps, put it on the floor, and continue rowing with the other foot in the foot stretcher. So a good solid drive for the leg that's still in, and just rock back and forth over your heel and ball of your foot for the foot that's on the floor. Just continue a normal stroke. You don't really have to change it much. One more stroke here. In fact, you don't have to change it at all. It's only because one foot's on the floor. Carry on rowing with the other foot. <sighs> Be like if you were dangling a foot off the boat into the water and rowing with just one foot. A pin's in your hand. <laughs> I think I've gone stir crazy after my day at work, sorry. Okay, two more strokes here, one more. And now let's put both feet in the straps. Slight bend to the knees, but nice and straight. And then rock your body backwards and pull in with your arms. So you're only using your body and your arms to row. Nothing's coming from your legs at all because they're out straight. That was for the benefit of the podcast listeners. <laughs> I have gone mad. One more stroke. 
and let's roll to the front of the machine, arms straight, and just press with the legs. Don't have to worry about driving too hard with the legs, just press off. I want you to think about that point right at the front of the machine where you pick up the flywheel, the catch, where you catch the flywheel. Okay, so just come in, try and think about your butt not scooting as you do it. There we go. One more stroke. And that's a four minute warm up. Now, as being the main session is 18 strokes a minute, we didn't need to get too warm because we're about to go through a nice low level bottom tier row. But keep on moving up and down the rail, have a quick drink because you're going to still need to be hydrated. And I'll quickly explain one more time uh, what it is we're doing today. Okay then, so today's row is going to be 30 minutes at 18 strokes per minute. Your pace is going to be 2k plus 20 to 22, which works out around about 5k plus 15 to 17. But if you feel this tough at all, please back off by a couple of seconds, okay? The sessions either side of this one are quite tough, and I want to make sure that this is a nice recovery, lets your body just calm down a little bit, all inflammation goes, and you're ready for the next session, okay? Now this one, because it's just a 30 minute row, we can set up the monitor together because we don't have to worry about any rests. So turn your monitor on, press select workout, standard list, and you'll see, well, maybe on yours, four down, 30 minutes. And you just press that and we're good to go, okay? Here we go then. In three, two, one, go. So 18 strokes a minute. At 2K plus 20 to 22. I don't have any fancy metrics on screen tonight. Sorry. It's not because I'm embarrassed of tonight's row. It's purely because I forgot to charge up my uh, Amazon Fire HD thing pad Android bajiggery. And that's what I usually run ErgZone on and do the screen capture for that and then overlay it for you but not tonight because I'm a big doofus ah. with an itchy nose okay so a minute into my waffling hopefully after the warm up and this first minute you're quite happy your movement's nice and fluid you're not feeling stiff or uncomfortable and you're starting to make sure all your sequencing of your stroke is in tune, in line with itself in line with itself, is that right? yeah, let's just say in line with itself even if it's not a thing it can be a roll along thing Uh, so I touched on a couple of I've still got an itchy nose. A couple of issues in the warm-up to think about for technique, but I really want to concentrate first on your leg drive. 18 strokes a minute is a great stroke rate to really concentrate on that forceful leg drive out from the front making sure the pressure is whoosh all the way through the leg drive letting it surge up from your legs through your body into your arms and into the handle but of course there's a lot a lot of things that come with that leg drive in order to make that happen but the most important thing is to push from the legs because if you just tickle with your legs hardly any power is going to go into the machine and you're going to be relying more on a big pull at the end and that's not where most of your power comes from so So we're going to start by making sure your legs are in the right position, primed for that push back. And the first part of that 
is getting your shins to vertical. Okay? Try not to go past vertical because there's a danger of a power leak, for want of a better phrase. If you're like me and have a tendency to do a butt scoot, which is where your backside starts sliding before you actually connect with the, fr the flywheel at the front of the machine. If you have a tendency for that, then sometimes if you go too far forwards so your shins are past vertical, then the resulting over compression can actually send your backside scooting backwards even further. But it can also just mean you can't get those heels down onto the foot plate when it comes to initiating the actual leg drive. Again, I'll raise the white flag here and say there are lots of rowers who get right up onto their toes at the front, heels right up in the air, shins way past vertical, and it works for them. But I think it puts undue stress in your flexibility, or my flexibility, let's, let's be honest, and the potential for the butt scoop power leak. Sounds like a band. Please welcome the butt scoop power leaks. Anyway. Yeah, too much potential for that, so stick with the shins vertical at the front. Now, you might not be able to reach vertical. That's another matter. If you can't get forwards enough that your shins are able to point vertical, if you have to stop a little bit short, then you're robbing yourself of potential leg drive and there's a really good chance that your body position will be completely wrong as well. You're likely to be sitting on your kind of the meat of your butt with your hips tucked underneath you uh, underneath you rather than sitting forwards on your sit bones with your hips angled forwards. Now, funny thing is that can be cause and it can also be result of not sliding forward. So having your hips under you can often be why you're not able to get those knees into a vertical position. Or shin, sorry, not knees. Um, but can also mean that even though you're sliding forwards with your hips in a semi-decent position because you're not getting up to vertical by the time you actually drive everything kind of rounds off or your back swings back too soon or whatever anyway long-winded way of looking at both angles and saying, try and go to vertical. So slide forwards, shins vertical, and that's the optimum kind of baseline point. Now, if you can't get to vertical, remember that's the option the other way where some people are so flexible they go way past, but maybe you have flexibility issues and that's why you can't get to vertical and obviously flexibility should be in your your um, training schedule just doing some stretching afterwards look at how to get flexibility into your ankles 
uh, your hip flexors. Make sure your back is mobile enough for the leaning forwards. And then you kind of need to practice the, sen the sensation of rolling forwards enough that your shins are at vertical. If you've been rowing for years at like half slide and haven't been vertical since like the 2010s <laughs> then you kind of need to teach yourself the sensation of how far forwards you need to roll to get there and that's where one of my technique hacks comes in yep I said hacks and for those listening on a podcast I used inverted comma fingers because everything on the internet is a hack cooking hacks and how to raise your children hacks and uh, anyway but basically it's a trick on how to teach you where to roll to on your seat and that is that when you're done rowing put just a one foot in the foot stretcher and roll forwards enough that that one leg you've got in points to vertical and then once you're in that position and you're stopped so don't do it right now when you're moving please so when you're stopped place a finger on the rail at the roller to mark the point where your roller gets to that means that you're at a vertical position now you'll see why I say don't do this while moving because if you stick a finger on there to mark it and roll into it trust me it's going to be agony so please do not do this when actually rowing do it in between rows when you're stopped have I said that enough? anyway so you get to the point put your finger on the rail and then get a post-it note and stick it to the rail depending on how dirty your rail is it may take a little bit of a rub but with a post-it note on the rail right at that point where the roller needs to get to for your shins to be at vertical you can then start rowing again and what will happen is every time you get to that point where your shins are vertical you'll feel a tiny click under your seat so go click click okay and that's the feedback it's all you need is you think did I feel the click on that stroke and if you didn't you try and roll a little bit further forwards did you feel it that time? ah I did okay so that's the sensation I need in order to get my shins a vertical so you continue your row just going back and forth did it click? okay did it click? no etc etc and eventually it'll just become second nature that the point you get to where that click happens is just how far your kind of muscle memory knows to roll so once you've found that position you can just leave the post-it note on the machine and every time you come on just try and feel the click because remember it's never going to change your vertical position is always your vertical position the only real difference is say you're miles off okay so you do your little measurement stopped 
then you go for a row and you're like I don't feel this at all I've not heard a click since whenever and then you look down and you see you're actually miles away from the post-it when you slide forwards which could happen if your flexibility is just not up there so leave the post-it where it is but place another one a little bit closer so you don't have to roll as far to hit it and then start rowing and think did I hit it? and if you don't hit it move it still a little bit further back if you do just hit it leave it where it is and try and see if you can hit it on every stroke if you hit it and then feel you continue rolling quite a lot then move it slightly further down the rail again until it becomes something that you only just reach and then once you get to a point that you're flexible to always feel that click move it slightly forward down the rail again until eventually you meet up with the post-it note that marks your vertical shin position and that's it you take off the dummy post-it leave the vertical shin position one in place and then just practice getting all your strokes to click at that vertical position now last thing to say crikey this has gone on a bit it's like over 10 minutes is if you're the kind of person that rolls too far forwards and your shins go past vertical what will happen is you'll feel the click at the vertical point but then you'll also feel you continue to roll forwards so in that instance you just need to pay attention that when you feel the click you just instantly get those heels down and drive you try not to continue rolling forwards so that is a very long-winded and hopefully safe description of the post-it note hack and it's all just gearing around getting your legs into the perfect position for their drive from the front of the machine so your legs are in the right position your heels are allowed to come up a little bit off the foot plate don't listen to people that say they can't come off at all it's rubbish your heels can lift as long as you're not like with horizontal feet <laughs> that might be a bit too far but the key is your heels can only lift provided your shoulders are past your hips and you're sitting on your sit bones in a forward lean if both of those cases are true then you're allowed a heel lift if they're not then I want you to keep your heels down and just think about your body position and not stress with a heel lift to be honest you can do a heel lift as well if your body position is wrong but I want you to concentrate on shoulders past hips and you're sitting on sit bones with a forward lean and then when you're ready to start the drive you slam those heels down into the foot plate and push the machine away I really do think 
about pushing the machine away. Don't just think, oh, I'm driving into the machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just really get your mindset done that you are staying in the same place. It's the machine that's moving. It's like the matrix. There is no spoon. You're not moving. You're moving the world. You're pushing the world away from you. Okay? <laughs> A bit far, I know, I know. But I want you to think about heels down and push with those legs. Now keep your knees not knock kneed together, but at the same time, not splayed outwards. I just want them comfortably inside both your arms. See how you make a bowl with your arms? Kind of like a circle between the handle, your arms and your chest. Just keep your knees inside that bowl as you're at the front of the machine and then press push the machine away push okay and make sure to really push through the stroke okay nice explosive surge at the front that finishes off all the way to the back end You'll get more power at the beginning of the stroke from your legs, but make sure to follow through with your legs and don't just stab at it at the front and then forget about finishing. But then that's only half the battle because if you were at the front of the machine laying backwards and you did that press, you get hardly any power into the machine because it's not going up through your back and giving you a chance to add power from your back so you lean forwards as you get to the front of the machine which then when you drive through the legs power travels up through your back into your arms into the handle and into the flywheel but then if you'll remember from the warm-up drill as you swing your back into that 11 o'clock position you add more power so you want to maintain that forward lean as you drive through the start of the stroke okay so don't go forwards with all the best intentions and then suddenly transition into a backwards lean as you start the drive which you see a lot to be fair and when I look at videos of me from not that long ago and actually same videos when I get tired you can see that I have that kind of my back goes to vertical way too soon so it's something to always work on and certainly something that on the water rowers need to establish a lot quicker than rowing machine rowers so you'll see on the water folks really load up their back with the power before coming to a finish so that's your back swinging from 11 o'clock at the front to sorry 1 o'clock at the front <laughs> to 11 o'clock at the back deliberate mistake on us um, but 
What about your arms? Surely they play a part. Well, they do, but not until the end of the stroke, really. At the drive, all they are is a conduit for the power from your legs. So if you have nice straight arms at the front, not locked rigid, but straight and relaxed, loose floppy shoulders, then as you drive with the legs, the power just kind of just goes straight through your arms. You don't have to fight against it. There's really no muscle power used from your arms until your leg drive and your back swing have finished. And that is the point when you bend your elbows and pull the handle into your chest at round about sternum height. Squeeze your shoulder blades together. Strong finish because your arms do still play a part. They're not an afterthought, but they're also not the powerhouse that some people think they are. So certainly don't bend your elbows too soon at the front of the stroke. I'm gonna keep them nice and straight with maybe even a external rotation of your elbows towards the floor. That really does help lock in that straight position and also engages your lats, which are huge and fantastic when it comes to pulling. And after all, this portion at the end is all about pulling. And then, as far as arms are concerned, once you've pulled into your chest, release your arms nice and quick again. Get them over your knees, start the rock, hip rock forwards, and then just bend your knees and you'll effortlessly slide to the front of the machine. And that is pretty much all you need to know about the stroke. There's a few things like chin position, being a nice neutral chin position, the height of the handle at the front of the machine, which is just nice and neutral. So as, you're, as you pull into your sternum, just release at the same height, roll forwards. And you should be at the a good neutral height, not too high, holding it up in the air, but also not so low that you're collapsing your back as you go forwards because you want a nice, powerful posture at the front of the machine and the back. Remember that old carrot? Just think about having a carrot stuck up your backside. You don't want to snap it at the front or at the back or during the stroke. You want that carrot to survive because nobody once, ah oh wait, <laughs> let's not finish that thought. Certainly nobody wants the carrot afterwards. To be clear though, I'm not saying I want you to stick a carrot up your backside. What I'm saying is imagine, okay? Just in case you all think I'm some kind of weirdo. I know I'm obsessed with food, but not that obsessed. Speaking of which, it's a Friday night. And you know what that means? Big bowl of spaghetti bolognese. Because it's carb night. Most, most days of the week, I tend to kind of be 
bit more cautious. Could tend to go for rice instead of pasta and not too often or whatever. But Friday nights, regardless where I am in my eating cycle, Friday night is spaghetti bolognese night. It's nice to have a routine. And considering I've lost over six kilograms since I went on my new eating regime since beginning of July. So it's now towards the end of October. So that's what, July, August, say four months and run about six kilograms, then I must be doing something, right? Just wind back a few videos on YouTube and you'll see my wee moon face go for the one right after I shaved off the beard and you'll just <laughs> see how round I was looking I'm not saying I'm Mr Skinny now but I'm certainly a lot less of the man I was four months ago okay four strokes to go and we're all done two more strokes to go one more stroke to go and that's it so very easy I could give myself a minute to just get the heart rate down a little bit and I could pretty much just go straight into a 2k and probably be within I don't know 10 seconds of my PB or well my series best shouldn't feel like you've got anything taken out of you there should feel like a good half hour workout I mean listen I'm perspiring properly and I'm slightly out of breath and all that kind of stuff but I don't feel taxed cardio wise I certainly don't feel like my legs are exhausted or anything I'm quite happy to go and have a plate of spaghetti I don't particularly want to do a 2k next and I'm not gonna <laughs> but I'm just saying that was a very bottom tier row and I hope it was for you too I really do hope you listen to me oh, it's not just for your rowing but for your health as well right two minute cooldown three two one go oh, just stay around about 2k plus 30 for this just just be moving enough at enough of a pace that your technique doesn't fall apart because you're going so slow but you don't particularly need to cool down much after that row but yeah if you're just to close that one off if you're constantly doing the real hard tough stuff over and over again eventually your body will just just respond poorly you're kind of being chronic inflammation or I don't know it's just it's not good for you it's not good for your energy system to be constantly burning sugars is what happens when you work too hard so kind of this is why there's in the five in the five within the five sessions two of the bottom tier ones are just a, a nice well bottom tier so that they are more of a fat burning exercise in terms of energy creation rather than the mids in the top tier which because of the intensity will start to use fat and sugars and then when you get completely anaerobic we'll only use sugars and that's kind of when your body starts to react with inflammation to kind of protect itself and that kind of stuff so all I'm saying is you don't want to do too many of those workouts so if you push the bottom tier ones so hard that you get the same body reaction and it's not just not good for you read up more about this if you're even vaguely interested because I have a very very glancing knowledge of it I'm not a nutritionalist or that way inclined I just read stuff and do it learn it and then here I kind of talk about it a little bit just to prime you for that knowledge so you can look into it if you're really interested look into a guy called Phil Maffetone two F's Maffetone in the math training which is all about really low heart rate exercise bit too low for my liking I just kind of never feel like I'm 
getting the good workout I want, but still worth healed. reading that stuff will then properly go through what I was just saying about the fuel and the sugars and the fats and stuff. So you can pr pretty much come back and <laughs> reply on this YouTube video and go, eh, you were talking rubbish. Or, hopefully, oh, now I see what you mean. I read this and it meant more so. Because I'm, I'm not talking rubbish, so. Anyway, that's a bit of a ranty one today, wasn't it? Between going on about uh, the vertical shins for such a long time and then talking at the end about fuel systems and stuff. But hey, it was a, one of those rows where I kind of needed... It's important that I can talk to you the whole way and keep you company so you kind of forget you're doing a half hour at 18 strokes per minute because as useful as a row that is, it really is dull, isn't it? It's not the most exciting one in the world, but it's important you do it not only for your energy system in terms of uh, how it reacts, but your foundation, your engine to be able to kind of power along at those faster ones. It's an absolutely vital row. Like I've said before, that kind of a row is more important than the mid-tier ones. If you only ever did bottom tier, like four bottom tiers a week and then one top tier, that would be perfect. Really the only reason that I stick in the odd mid-tier is just to mix things up and keep it exciting and give you a little bit of a taste of the intensity of your test. Um, but you could just do four bottoms and a top and you'll be absolutely just as golden and just as fast. Um, but just it's about the exposure and getting used to uh, rowing at race pace and all that kind of stuff that the mid-tier then becomes a little bit more useful. Anyway. This is in. going down in the in the uh, in the books is one of the longer in, uh, outros, but hey, it's a Friday night, um, and it's kind of I'm waiting for the spaghetti to cook, so I'm just kind of spending time with you for a while. <laughs> anyway, so what's left for the hashtag? Have I ever had hashtag spag ball? He pauses, waiting for an answer from somebody. I don't think I have. So can we just do hashtag spag ball? Because it's a Friday, and uh, I know it'll probably be a Saturday or a Sunday or, a, well, any other day of the week that you're doing this. But for me, it's a Friday, so let's make it hashtag spagball. Um, and thank you once again for putting up with my nonsense and uh, the stuff I talk about during a row. Hopefully you got a good workout and you're kind of left a little bit quizzical about the guy who talks really fast, who, which I've been told before. It's like, stop speaking so fast. We can't understand you because you're so speaking so fast. Blah, blah, blah. So and if I slow down, then, uh, anyway. Right. Okay, it's time for me to go. Bye-bye.